The Wheel of Time is an epic struggle between the forces of the light led by the Dragon Reborn and the Amarlin Seat, and then the forces of the Dark One led by the Forsaken and all the Shadow Spawn and Dark Friends. Now, in this epic 15 book series, there are so many amazing battles, confrontations, and conflicts. In today's video, we're going to focus on some individual fights. Join me today as we break down the top 10 fights from the Wheel of Time. Today's video is going to carry a spoiler rating of red with major spoilers running all the way through the final book of the series, A Memory of Light. If you don't want to be spoiled, turn back now because I am 100% going to spoil the shit out of the Wheel of Time today. You have been warned. So if you've ever watched one of my top 10 videos before, you know that I absolutely have to have some ridiculous and convoluted ranking system because I'm not allowed to just have opinions. So I took every single fight and confrontation that we had in the books and I rank them using the following factors. First, I rank them on significance. The best fights are the ones that the stakes are high for. Does the fight matter? If it's just two people having a bar fight and it's not connected to the plot, that's not as important. Second is cool factor. Is the fight really cool or done in a unique way? Are there cool weapons or points of view to the fight? Or is it just really interesting conceptually? Third, is the fight satisfying? Do you finish reading it on a high? Is it cathartic? Does it make you feel good that you just read it? And lastly, is the fight suspenseful? Is there tension? Is it really obvious who's gonna win? Or is it tense as though it could go either way and the winner is in question for a while? Again, it's not very interesting when it's a blowout. All of those factors are gonna get a score out of five with a final score of 20. Now keep in mind, we will be focusing on fights and not battles. So it must be one person versus another person or one person versus a bunch of other people. It can't be one group versus another group. That's a battle. So I'll have the full list up on Patreon for my patrons if you wanna see more than just the top 10, but let's get into it. Taking the number 10 spot on the list is the confrontation between Egwene and Mesa Anna from Towers of Midnight. Now to set the scene, this comes as Egwene has laid a trap to draw out the remaining Black Aja sisters in Teleron Riyadh. The battle ensued, Masana was finally drawn out, and then Egwene wins a battle of wills, destroying Mesa Anna's mind. Now the fight is very significant in the fact that it exposes Mesa Anna and it ends her meddling in the White Tower. The Black Aja is almost completely destroyed and Egwene has defeated one of the Forsaken outright. Without Egwene winning this fight, the forces of the light would have been even more disadvantaged. So it was a very important fight for the story. I'll give it a four out of five. So as for cool factor, I always thought this fight was a bit cheesy, even if it was really cool how Egwene breaks Masana's mind. The idea that Egwene is mentally strong is a bit over the top as she calls on thousands of years of the Amarlins, in her own mind at least, which I suppose makes sense for Egwene psyching herself up. I just never thought it was a drop down, amazing, cool, or unique thought process or fight. That being said, I do love that she did something that the Forsaken didn't think was possible. So I'll give it a three out of five. As for the fight being satisfying, uh, I would say it's middle of the road. We have been dealing with the mystery of who Miss Anna is and Egwene defeating her for a few books now, but I also don't know that I would say it's one of the most anticipated fights of the series. When I'm rereading the series, it doesn't stand out to me as one of the moments that I just can't wait to get to, so I'm gonna give it a three out of five. Lastly, we come to whether the fight was suspenseful or not. And I would say that this is a very suspenseful fight. You are certainly on the edge of your seat reading the entire Teleron Riyadh confrontation, and Equain is a total badass during this fight. The fact that she is captured with an IDOM feels awful, and there's a question of what's gonna happen next, so there is some suspense. I'll give it a four out of five. In total, Egwene vs. Mesa Anna gets a 14 out of 20 and earns the number 10 spot on my list. With the number 9 spot, we have Rand and Nynaeve versus Ravine. Now, I suppose I should really add Mog Gideon here as well. Uh, Rand finally confronts Ravine after believing that Morgase was killed by him. And then the fight enters Teleron Riyadh. Now, Nynaeve, fresh off capturing Mog Gideon in the World of Dreams with an IDOM, shows up just as Ravine was about to defeat Rand. She uses Mog Gideon to blast Ravine with fire, breaking his concentration long enough for Rand to bail fire the hell out of Ravine 
and then bring back Matt and Avienda from the dead. So let's talk significance. The fight ended the reign of Ravin and Camelin, which had been significant in that he was about to take over Kyrian as well. But also, Ravin had killed both Avienda and Matt, both of whom go on to play massively important roles in the story, specifically Matt. Had he stayed dead, it is likely that the Dark One wins. So this fight is extremely significant both in the short term and in the long term for the story. And because of this, I'm going to give it a five out of five for significance. As for cool factor, this is an interesting fight in the sense that Nynaeve is using Mog Gideon to attack Ravine and Rand doesn't even know she is coming. I think it's a very cool moment and a very cool way to fight in the sense that it's just different from the other fights that happen. I also love that Rand was going to lose if Nynaeve hadn't showed up. I'm going to give it a four out of five for cool factor. As for whether the fight was satisfying or not. Now, this is not a fight that lands high on that meter for me. Killing Ravine is not a moment that I'm always looking forward to. It comes right after the death of Moraine, quote unquote, uh, which is far more emotional to me. This doesn't feel as important in comparison, at least while I'm reading. And so therefore, it never really makes me super excited to read it. I'll give it a two out of five for satisfying. Finally, on suspense. Now, this is a fight where it does look like Rand is going to lose. And there's a question of whether or not he can win. The only problem that I have with this is I didn't really ever feel like Ravine wouldn't lose. This isn't a fight where you thought, oh, yeah, Ravine probably will turn Rand into a horse and series is over. Uh, I never bought that. So the stakes weren't quite what they maybe could have been. I'll give it a three out of five. In total, the Rand and Nynaeve versus Ravine fight gets a 14 out of 20. But because I enjoy it more than Egwene versus Masada, this one gets the number nine spot on the list. So coming in at number eight on my list, we have Rand and Lanfear's fight near the docks in Kyrian, near the very end of Fires of Heaven. Now, I suppose I should also include Moraine in this as she's actually the one that ends it by tackling Lanfear through this doorway. But the quick recap here, Lanfear hears that Rand had some sexy time with Avienda and decides to go batshit crazy. Using a very powerful Angriol, she attacks Rand and his party by the docks. Now, Rand, using his own Angriol, is able to somewhat fend off her attacks, but he doesn't really know what he's doing and his lack of experience and the fact that she's extremely powerful and the fact that he doesn't want to kill her, sets up a situation where she almost kills him. Now, if not for Moraine tackling Lanfear through the doorframe, Lanfear probably would have defeated him. So let's start with significance. Now, this is a major fight in that it eliminates Lanfear from influencing Rand going forward, takes the Forsaken off the board, at least for a little bit, and it kills Moraine for most of the series. This leaves Rand on his own without guidance, but outside of that, this isn't a major battle. It's not a huge strategic victory. So I'm going to give it a three out of five for significance. So for cool factor, the fight sort of falls in the middle for me. I mean, it's cool in the sense that seeing Lanfear being crazy and Rand struggling to defend himself, that's fun. I love Moraine taking her out, but it's just not up there with some of the other super cool moments for me. And I'm not a huge fan of Rand struggling to kill the crazy lady that's trying to kill him. The toxic masculinity is a bit too much for me at this point. Uh, I'll give it a three out of five for cool factor. So is it a satisfying fight? I would say yes, for a couple reasons. I think it for sure wraps up Moraine's story really well, and it teases a larger story. The fight and the, the letter that Moraine leaves always makes me somewhat emotional, and I love that it can do that. So I'm going to give it a four out of five for satisfaction. Lastly, for suspense, the fight certainly leaves you wondering if Lanfear will kill Egwene or Moraine or anybody that's with Rand. There is a feeling of real menace coming from Lanfear, and she gives off super crazy vibes for sure because there's a feeling that she there could be a real loss associated with the fight and the fact there ends up being one i'll give it a four out of five in total Rand versus Lanfear gets a 14 of 20. And because I like it more than the other two that were also at 14 out of 20, this one's going to get the number eight spot on the list. All right, before continuing with my list, let me throw it over to myself for a word from this video sponsor, Magic Spoon. All right, so I want to take a moment now and tell you about this video's sponsor, Magic Spoon. Now, it's a really cool sponsor for me because if you're not aware, uh, I bear getting back into the keto diet. And it's something that comes naturally to me. I feel at my best when I don't have carbs in my diet. I just don't feel like garbage. Uh, I set a goal this year to drop about 70 pounds by the end of the year. I'm on track and I wanna tell you, Magic Spoon, the sponsor of this video, is actually a massive part of that. You see, one of the things that I miss that I've always loved, it's like the best snack ever, is cereal. That's hard to do when you're on keto because you can't do all the sugar stuff. Most cereals are packed with sugar. 
Even the milk has carbs in it. Uh, that's where Magic Spoon comes in. So Magic Spoon is an amazing keto-friendly, gluten-free, soy-free, and low-carb cereal that tastes amazing. My favorite flavor is the blueberry and the berry flavors. I just like berry stuff. There's tons of flavors, and they actually taste really, really good. Like, seriously, I will snack on it, even without milk, uh, and I've been losing weight. Magic Spoon boasts zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. There are also only 140 calories in each serving as well. Whether you're doing keto or you just wanna lower the amount of sugar you or your kids are eating, Magic Spoon is worth a shot. I think you'll love it. It's a great way to get yourself off to a good start with your health. You can build your very own four pack of cereal boxes though with Magic Spoon. Just head to their website and use the code NABLESS at checkout and you're gonna get a $5 discount on a four pack of boxes. You can also head to magicspoon.com forward slash Nablus and do the same thing. Magic Spoon is also shipping to Canada and the UK now. So for all my Canadian folks and all my Brits that watch this, you can get in on that action. Thank you to Magic Spoon for sponsoring this video. Make sure to check them out. And now let's get back to it. All right, with the number seven spot on the list, we have a fan favorite fight and sort of Matt's coming out party as many people's favorite character. And this, of course, is the fight between Matt and his quarterstaff and Galad and Gawain with their swords. It's an iconic fight scene and it's so much fun to see Matt take them down a peg. Let's break it down. For significance, unfortunately, this was just not that big of a deal in the scheme of things. The story does not suffer without it and it doesn't help the light defeat the shadow. So this fight is only going to get a one out of five for significance. For cool factor though, the fight gets a five out of five. It's super cool imagining Matt using a quarter staff and beating town two overconfident sword fighters with a massive audience. The idea of a tired Matt relying on his luck and skill to beat them badly is certainly pretty darn cool. Now in terms of the fight being satisfying, it's absolutely satisfying. Probably the most satisfying of the fights on this list. We all love watching cocky people be brought down a peg and that's exactly what we get here, so five out of five. Lastly, for suspense. We really aren't sure the first time around what's gonna happen. I mean, we have no inclination that Matt has any skill with fighting more than one person at a time, and from Matt's point of view, he feels like he's gonna lose the entire time. It's, it's hard, I think, sometimes to forget what it was like reading it for the first time uh, from a suspense standpoint, because now we all know what Matt is, but because of that, I'm gonna give it a five out of five. So in total, Matt vs. Galad and Gawain gets a 15 out of 20, and it earns the number seven spot on my list. Coming in at number six, we have one of my favorite Rand moments, and that is the battle at Maradon. Now in the books, Rand sent Rodal at Tiralda and his armies to defend Saldea against the Trollocs and largely abandoned him to doing that. So during this time, Itaralda and his army fought outside the city of Maradon, on the walls, and then later in the streets. All seemed lost when Rand shows up with his army and destroys the Trollocs single-handedly in an incredible display of the One Power. I always look forward to reading this scene. So, for significance, the battle is very significant, as Rand destroys one of the Dark One's armies that was invading for the last battle. Imagine if there had been another army for the Forces of the Light to contend with. The Forces of the Light would have been unable to handle that. Additionally, it sent the message that Rand was a force to be reckoned with. We'll give it a four out of five here for significance. For cool factor, this one was just amazingly cool in my opinion. Seeing Rand just use weave after weave to the absolute astonishment of all the Ashaman present, that's fun to see. The number of weaves and just the determination there was incredible, five out of five. As to whether it was satisfying, again, I think it's very satisfying. We had seen this story building and developing over the course of Towers of Midnight, and all truly did seem lost for Itoralda's army. Seeing Rand swoop in and save the day was very fun and very satisfying. Five out of five. And lastly, for suspense. There wasn't much suspense in this fight as it was Rand at full Zen Rand, and you could kind of tell he was just going to save the day. It was just going to happen. So two out of five. In total, Rand versus the Trolloc army at Maradon gets a 16 out of 20, and it earns the number six spot on my list. So breaking into the top five, we have the most important fight on the list, 
That is, of course, Rand fighting the Dark One at the last battle. Now, I struggled on whether or not to classify this as an actual fight, but I think it really is the focal point or the focal point fight of the entire series, and it's certainly unique, so I decided to put it on here. In terms of significance, as I mentioned, this is probably the most significant fight in the story. There really can't be any more significant stories than the dragon versus the dark one. So easy five out of five here. For Cool Factor, I actually thought it was very cool how this became a battle of wills and ideas rather than an all out fight. It was unique. The confrontation felt different than I had expected it in my first read through. And I love that. It gets a four out of five for Cool Factor. Now, as for satisfactions, the fight is a satisfying end of the story. I think the expectations were incredibly high after 15 books of preamble to the final confrontation. So it was very possible to be a massive letdown. And I do not think it was that. So the fight gets a four out of five from me for satisfying. As for suspense, well, we really knew Rand was likely to win the last battle. The manner of that victory, though, wasn't set, and it was very difficult to predict how the fight would go. So Rand versus the Dark One gets a four out of five for suspense. So in total, the fight gets a 17 out of 20 for me. It earns the number five spot on my list. Coming in at the number four spot, we have a fight that happened multiple times in the books, but the final time that Matt faced off against the Golom, I was on the edge of my seat. In that final battle, Matt, using some stellar fighting, his medallion, and of course his luck, positioned the Golom into a place where he had the kin open a gateway. Matt was able to push the Golom through the door, and it's likely that to this day he is still falling to his death. So for significance, this is more significant than you might realize. A weapon like the Golom would have been disastrous during the last battle, and it would have been able to cause major casualties among the Aes Sedai, Ashaman, and even Rand. I'll give it a 4 out of 5. For cool factor, I think this fight was pretty darn cool. The idea of Matt swinging around his Ashandari with medallion copies all over it, and hanging with the Golom blow for blow, all of that while one misstep could cause his death, I think that's pretty cool. I also love the strategy behind the Golom's demise as well. Matt was showing that he could really think outside the box. So I'll give it a four out of five. As for whether this was satisfying, I would say absolutely. The Golom had been a legitimately scary villain to me in that he had killed major characters in horrific ways. He had seemed to have almost no weaknesses, and I legit thought that he actually might kill more people that we liked. So I was worried about it. So for Matt to finally defeat the Golom, that was awesome. So I'll give it a 5 out of 5 for satisfying. Lastly, for suspense, this is an easy 5 out of 5 for me. As I mentioned, I was on the edge of my seat during this fight, and I think it wasn't really clear what would happen other than that Matt had a plan. I enjoy reading it every time. So in total, Matt versus the Golom gets an 18 out of 20, and it earns the number 4 spot on my list. Coming in at number three, we have Mogideon and Nynaeve's fight in the Panarch's palace from the Shadow Rising. For those that do not remember, Nynaeve faces off against the Forsaken in the museum room in the Panarch's palace as they fight over the male Idom that can be used to control Rand. Now, at first, Nynaeve is terrified and fights with every part of her being, but gradually realizes that she is equally as strong as the Forsaken, if not stronger. She is then able to shield Mogideon, and if not for the Black Aja firing Balefire at her, Nynaeve would have had her captured. So for significance, the battle is not significant in the sense that it decided the story, but it was significant in the fact that it was the first time Nynaeve realized her true power, and the result of this battle kept the Black Aja from getting a device that could have been used to control Rand. So I'll give it a 4 out of 5. For cool factor, this was always such a cool fight to me. Despite not much happening, I love that anyone that came into that room would simply see two women staring at each other, not knowing that they were fighting for their lives. I also love that Nynaeve outthinks Mogideon and throws something at her, so I'll give it a 5 out of 5. As for the battle being satisfying, I loved watching Nynaeve come into her power, hold her own, and win. The only thing that hurts this a little bit is that Mogideon got away. So I'll give it a 4 out of 5. Lastly, for suspense, we really didn't know how it would go. And I mean, up to this point, Mogideon had handled Nynaeve easily, and had used compulsion to control her, so it was not really a given that Nynaeve would survive, let alone win the battle. Because of the lack of that knowledge for us as the reader, the fight gets a 5 out of 5 for suspense. In total, Nynaeve vs. Mogideon gets an 18 out of 20 and earns the number 3 spot on my list. Now, with the number 2 spot on the list, 
we have a fan favorite scene and one of my personal favorites, and that is Egwene versus the entire Sean Chan invading force. So when it comes to the end of the Gathering Storm, Egwene is in captivity in the White Tower, she's dosed with Fork Root, and when the Sean Chan attack the White Tower, chaos ensues. Now, Egwene is the only person in the tower that seems to remember that they have tons of Angriel and Sa Angriel to use, and she proceeds to single-handedly fight off the Sean Chan with her own band of novices and the most powerful female Sa Angriel known. So, for significance, this is incredibly important. Without the forces of the White Tower, the Sean Chan win, the Shadow wins. Egwene, and by extension the Aes Sedai she leads, play a vital role in the light being victorious. None of which happens if the White Tower is completely broken and all the Aes Sedai are captured. Five out of five. For cool factor, this one is pretty damn cool in my opinion. I love the idea of Egwene being a one-woman army, absolutely wowing everyone with her skill and her power. The idea of linking novices is pretty cool to me, and the fact that she is the only person to think of using objects of power as well. I can literally picture her stalking the halls of the White Tower, killing Sean Chan on sight, standing in the holes in the side of the tower, and just blowing up Rockin. I love this scene. Five out of five for cool factor. So... You might guess this by now. Is the fight satisfying? Well, yeah. We've seen Egwene depowered for a while at this point in the story. Uh, so not to mention she also has PTSD from her captivity by the Shan Chan. So it's incredibly satisfying to see her go Super Saiyan and get revenge on the Shan Chan, protect the tower, and just unleash hell on them. Five out of five. Lastly, for suspense, we hadn't seen Egwene do this in a long time, so it wasn't certain how the fight was going to go. That being said, it was also obvious that Egwene wasn't going to lose. Where I add some suspense back into the fight was the outcome and what was going to happen after the battle, so I'll give it a 4 out of 5 for suspense. In total, Egwene versus the Shan Chan gets a 19 out of 20 and earns the number 2 spot on my list. All right, we made it. Number one spot on the list, we have Lan versus Demondred in the last battle. Now, this is an amazing battle on a number of levels. So in case you forgot, Demondred was leading the forces of the Shadow to victory, by the way, and had defeated Gawain, Galad, and Loghain, who all came at him and got their asses kicked. Lan, seeing that they could not win with Demondred alive, he rides in, uses Matt's medallion, defeats Demondred by allowing himself to be stabbed and delivering the movie-esque one-liner, I didn't come here to win, I came here to kill you, death is lighter than a feather. So, for significance, the fight is key in winning the last battle and saving the people of the world. Without Demondred's death, the armies of the Shadow were gonna win, so five out of five. As for cool factor, this was truly a badass moment for Lan. I mean, he sacrifices himself, even though he ended up living, so that he could take out the leader of the Shadow. This was Lan living up to be the badass that we knew him to be throughout the story. Again, five out of five. As for satisfying, it was great to see Demondred meet his match and lose, especially to a man who couldn't even channel. This was also done in a way where Lan's sacrifice meant something, I almost wish Lan had ended up dying just to make it an actual sacrifice, but nevertheless, it was incredible. Five out of five. And lastly, for suspense, we had multiple people go down against Demondred, so it was far from a given that Lan was going to come out and win the fight, or that he would live through it. Lan even had to allow Demondred to stab him just so he could get a killing blow. So, five out of five. In total, Lan versus Demondred gets a 20 out of 20, earns the number one spot on my list. So there it is. My list of the best fights from the Wheel of Time. Do you agree with my list? What would be your list? Let me know in the comments of the video. I'll have a pinned comment where you can give me your list. Now, if you like content like this, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I make Wheel of Time book and TV content here, so make sure you're subscribed so you can, you can watch all the stuff that's coming and go back and watch one of the more than 250 Wheel of Time-based videos I have on this channel. Huge thank you to my patrons for supporting me and this channel and the website, thegreatblight.com. You all make this content possible. Thank you for your support. Consider checking out my Patreon page to support the channel and the content. Lastly, take a look at one of these videos here that you might enjoy. I've got tons of other ones. Again, thank you for watching and until next time, peace out.